to another video review. Today I'll be sharing my thoughts on the Pele flashlight. This is a collaborative piece between TIT Design and CWF Custom Flashlights. The retail price on this guy is $600, but I personally paid $300 during TIT Design's Black Friday sale. As always, I'll be sharing my honest thoughts on this light, whether I think it's good or bad, and whether I think it's ultimately worth its asking price. On another note guys, I've also set up my website again and sort of revamped it if you will. So if you're more to text reviews, more pictures, stuff like that, you want some more details on the criteria I use to grade my flashlights, feel free to check that out as well. Diving into the good stuff, the attention to detail and the build quality on this torch is stellar, as you might expect for the asking price, of course. Um, but to go off of that, the surface finish is consistent everywhere on the torch, even the inside of the tube, which is something that's often overlooked by some other custom makers, like Sinner's Customs, for example. That being said, I will note that there is some grittiness to the threads at the head, as well as some thread play. It's very slight, and this is sort of typical with titanium, but I have seen better examples with some of my other high-end lights that use titanium as well. I think that the overall design of the Pele gets a lot of things right. And just starting from the top, you have your slight crenellations at the bezel, and then at the tail, you have your recessed tail cap switch. The recessed tail cap switch is going to allow for tail standing, while the crenellations at the bezel are going to let you know if the flashlight is on, if you have the bezel down. Design language and aesthetics are always going to be a little bit subjective, but I do think the Pele looks quite clean for what it is. So all that said, one thing I'm a really big fan of though is the clip here. The TI2 design clip is probably one of my favorites right now, and what you'll notice about this clip is that it has a very high lip to it, and what this means is that it's going to be able to clip onto even thicker work pants if you are a more utilitarian user, if you will. Furthermore, unlike on the Arcadian, which I reviewed previously, the clip on the Pele rests on the body, not the head, so it doesn't jut out sort of awkwardly like it did on the Arcadian flashlight. Okay, so the host of the flashlight aside, let's talk about the electronics. The Pele is using the CWF Dragon Driver. The SPET driver is unique because it has a secondary channel which allows for secondary LEDs. As you can see, I've chose to go with red on mine, but you also have options of amber, blue, and green. Personally, I think the red and amber are going to be the most practical because they preserve your night vision, while the blue and green are a bit more gimmicky. The firmware of the driver itself is relatively basic. There's eight preset mode groups, and those mode groups have the option for mode memory and reversing the order. There's also other functions like bike stroke, battery check, and a temperature limit. The LuxRC 3711D is definitely more advanced, but I do enjoy the simplicity of this driver to a certain extent. There's also two output levels for the secondary LEDs on the driver, which are both brighter than the LuxRC's one. CWF is also using the newer Samsung LH351D LED. This LED is brighter than the Nichia 219C that most of you are probably familiar with, and it also doesn't come at the expense of color rendering, which is sort of surprising. Something that I noticed rather quickly when I used this flashlight is how broad the hotspot on these LEDs are. They're a lot broader and wider than any other LED on my other triple flashlights. Whether this is good or bad is going to depend on your usage case, but um, if you're looking for a true wall of light, this is probably the one that you want to go for. All right, so here's some close range use with the Pele. That's medium, I believe. There's high. And there's those swing sets I was referencing earlier. And there's turbo. So yeah, it's it can punch through. It has the power to punch through to medium short ranges. But like I said earlier, it's definitely straining, even at medium range, just because of how flooded the LEDs are. And it's definitely heating up quite quickly at the head. So yeah. And then for comparison's sake, here's the DC1, which is running XPL2 emitters, which are going to be a bit more throwy. That's the low, that's the medium. And here is the high. So yeah, you can see it's a bit more of a defined hotspot. Stuff further back is definitely more visible, especially at medium ranges. And yeah, this is more of an all-arounder, a bit more throwy than most triples, perhaps. And there you have it, guys. A brief comparison between perhaps a more throwy emitter and what is one of the broadest emitters that I have seen yet in it. Okay, so let's talk about the ugly stuff. When I first held the Pele in my hand, I quickly realized it was designed around larger individuals' hands. And this can sort of be predicated on two instances, the first of which is the switch boot cavity. This switch boot cavity is clearly more recessed than some other flashlights, and it's sort of been designed around people who have longer, larger thumbs. Normally, this wouldn't be a huge issue because you can use a cigar grip hold to actuate the switch pretty easily, but the problem with the Pele is that there's very little taper to the body if you'll notice here. So it's actually quite uncomfortable to use a cigar hole grip with my hands. That being said, I doubt this would be much of an issue with people with larger hands. This problem with the Pele is more a consequence of my own size medium hands, and I'm sort of nitpicking here. I doubt most people would notice these things 
if they've never held another flashlight like the Oveready Boss 35, which is ergonomically superior in every regard. Something else that I found ugly about this flashlight is that the secondary LEDs are always on when the primary LEDs are on. I'll throw up a picture on the side so you guys have a better idea of what I'm talking about. The drain on the battery is probably pretty much negligible, and I'll live with it nonetheless, but it is still very ugly in my opinion, and I just wanted to put it out there. To be fair, you're probably never going to notice it unless you're using Moonlight pretty frequently. My next issue has to do with the versatility of the Dragon Driver. As I mentioned earlier, it's actually quite basic, and you're effectively limited to 8 preset mode groups. While this might already seem overkill to most non-flashlight geeks, this is actually quite underwhelming compared to what most drivers on the market now deliver. What I would have liked to have seen maybe is the ability to add and subtract specific modes as well as set individual brightness levels for those modes in the future. Right, let's talk about the stuff that's just plain bad. Um, the reversing options which require a tap and then waiting half a second to tap in again give turbo, strobe, bike strobe I think? Or that was bat check and that's bike strobe. But yeah, there are a couple problems with this setup. Um, the first of which being that it's very easy to inadvertently activate turbo if you tap it on and try to progress to the next output level half a second later and it shoots you up with turbo. Um, for example, think about if you wake up in the middle of the night and you're using the red output and you walk by someone's doorway and you don't want to disturb them so you turn off the light briefly and then you turn it back again on again right after to continue down the hallway. You're going to blast your half asleep retinas with full max output which is turbo. The other issue here is the placement of strobe. As it stands, strobe takes way too long to get into. Obviously, strobe is sort of most applicable as a defensive option. You don't want to be going through numerous button clicks and having to wait when you're under duress. There is an option called reversing toggle that removes all these mode groups entirely and sort of eliminates the problem, but then you're missing perfectly good um, functions like battery check, the temperature limit, and the bike strobe. Right, now let's talk conclusions. Is this flashlight worth it? Those of you who have watched my videos before know that I like to comment on the perceived value of torches as well as their longevity. Um, as a general disclaimer, I can't objectively quantify factors like shop overhead, the bond between maker and buyer, as well as that magic X factor. That out of the way, I want to comment on what I think is an acceptable price range for this light, at least to the extent of which a buyer should expect to pay. Similar to the Hanko torches, I've seen the Pele run far over its MSRP and intrinsic value on the secondary market. Factors such as height, supply and demand, and the market as a whole all play into this. I have seen this particular model of the Pele run as high as $975 and as low as $300. That is an absurd price difference that speaks volumes to the volatility of this torch's value. On my review of the CWO of Arcadian, one of my viewers criticized me for effectively saying that the Arcadian was not worth it. And as I've just outlined, this is my reason why. I'm not saying you shouldn't buy one of these torches, hell I bought one. But um, rather think about what constitutes the value of these torches to you, and just really don't buy into the hype, guys. When you get to this level of high end, you're purchasing a piece of art just as much as you are a functional torch. And that's sort of why maybe I'd recommend looking into one of the engraved Pele's instead of the base model, especially at $600. Overall, I think with some revisions to the Dragon Driver, the Pele could really be a home run. No doubt that there are more refined and cost-effective torches out there. That being said, for a first effort and a collaborative piece, the Pele is pretty solid for what it is and I think I'd give it my recommendation to stand some of the secondary market prices. As always, I hope you guys found this review informative, and I'm going to wrap it up here. Thumbs up if you liked it, and subs if you loved it. Peace out.